Hello, Brian Weeks here again with another MMCD contract consideration. This video clip will cover the topic of document hierarchy cautions. In this short video, I'm going to explain the meaning, purpose, and use of a document hierarchy and warn of a couple of potential problems which arise when owners don't understand why this is important. I will explain that sometimes contractors get to choose which option to follow if documents contain conflicting information. First, let me define the document hierarchy and explain why it is often essential. There are literally dozens of documents which form the entire contract set. I'm not talking about the number of pages, but actual different types. For example, the most powerful document is the agreement between the owner and the contractor, but everything else flows from this document. But numerous types of documents are part of the tender package. These include general conditions, specifications, standard detail drawings, and specific project design drawings. In addition, there are most often supplementals to all these documents to reflect owner preferences and items which are unique to a project. If that were not enough, drawings and specifications often reference other documents such as CSA or ASTM standards. By doing so, these two become contract documents. But that's only prior to tendering. Once the contract is active, dozens of additional documents are created which also become contract documents. For example, change orders and site instructions or field memos have the ability to change requirements for a contractor. Of course, in a perfect world, these documents would never provide conflicting information. Unfortunately, we don't live in that perfect world. We have to expect that amongst these thousands of pages of instructions to the contractor, there will be some conflicting directions. So, how does the contractor know which to follow? Consider the analogy of playing a card game. You're not able to play any card game if you don't know how the cards rank. In some games, the ace is the highest card. In others, the lowest. In some games, the joker has meaning, but in others, it does not. You must know the ranking. Here's where the document hierarchy comes in. The document hierarchy defines which documents are outranked by any given class of document. In the MMCD Platinum Edition, the document hierarchy can be found in General Condition 2.2.4. Section 1 of the clause sets the ranking with the agreement as the highest ranking document. Following that are the addenda, the general conditions, the specifications, the drawings, the executed tender, the instructions to tender, and everything else. Note that in the cases of the general conditions, the specs, and the drawings, any issued supplemental of that class outranks the standard version. This is necessary to ensure there is a way to override standard provisions. Sections 2, 3, and 4 of the clause ensure that drawings of a larger scale or with dimensions shown or of a later date outrank their base version. Tender document preparers, owners, contract administrators, and contractors, including their superintendents, must know this hierarchy, or at least that it exists and where to find it. As with all general conditions, owners have the ability to modify this clause to change the order or add or delete items. With one exception that I'll discuss later, the association does not recommend modifying the standard document hierarchy. Earlier I mentioned that some documents refer to others which make those others contract documents too. I'm occasionally asked at what level these reference documents appear in the hierarchy. The short answer is that they come in at the same level as the document which called them in. For example, if a supplementary specification refers to a CSA standard, that CSA standard comes in at the level of a supplementary specification. The only time this gets a bit confusing is when a contract document calls in a document of another type. For example, 
Suppose a drawing called up a CSA specification. Just keep the same principle in mind. The other type does not matter. The new document comes in at the rank of the calling document. So in this example, the CSA specification would rank as a drawing, not as a specification. Let's do another example of a simple application of the hierarchy. Say a supplementary specification requires that all asphalt used for this owner's work must include a minimum of 20% recycled asphalt product, wrap. During tendering, an addendum comes out specifying that for this project, wrap content is limited to 10%. Given these conflicting directions, how does the tenderer know what to build into the bid? We simply look to GC 2.2.4 to see that the addendum outranks everything but the agreement. Thus the tenderer must bid asphalt based on a maximum of 10% wrap. But the document hierarchy cannot solve all conflict problems on its own. It only helps when the conflicting information occurs in documents at different levels in the hierarchy. When the conflict occurs in documents at the same level, a legal principle known as contra preferentum applies. This principle sets out that the party which did not draft the documents gets to have their reasonable interpretation upheld. What this means in a construction scenario is the contractor gets to choose which of the two conflicting instructions to follow. Well, guess what? The contractor is going to choose the cheaper option. This is to be expected and is, quite frankly, reasonable. The contractor is in business to make money and does this by winning tenders. It is clearly to a contractor's advantage to choose the less expensive option, so you shouldn't be surprised if he does. Because of this legal principle, the CA cannot arbitrarily choose the more expensive option. If the owner wishes the more expensive option, then the CA must issue a change order with cost and possible time adjustments made. The reality is that the owner goofed by allowing there to be a conflict in the documents, and the contractor is not expected to bear the burden of that mistake. It is not possible for an owner to contract out of the contra preferentum principle, that is, to simply state that the contra preferentum principle does not apply. However, owners can insert a supplementary general condition which states something like, if a conflict occurs, the contractor is to follow the instructions for the more expensive option. This will clarify the situation for all involved, but it can open the door to additional costs which, being unaware of the conflict, the owner might not anticipate or wish. Here's an example. Suppose two pages in the same drawing set show different views of the same retaining wall. One drawing dimensions the wall as 50 centimeters high. The second shows elevations of the top and bottom of the wall with the difference being 60 centimeters. This is a contra preferendum problem. The document hierarchy cannot help as both drawings are at the same level. The contractor will choose the 50 centimeter dimension as it is cheaper to build. The CA cannot impose the 60 centimeter dimension without issuing a change order for additional cost and possibly time. I'd like to discuss two situations I've seen which lead to document hierarchy problems. Frequently, an owner will have a set of common supplementaries which it uses on all projects that it builds. In addition, there will be project specific supplementaries. Often, these are combined as one group of supplementaries when tendering. If there is a conflict between documents in these supplementaries, then there's no way for the document hierarchy to help as both are at the same level. Common sense would indicate that anything project specific should override items used for all projects, but that's not what the documents say. Without changes to the contract documents, this situation results in a contra preferentum situation where the contractor gets to choose. If an owner has both common and project specific supplementaries, the MMCD Association recommends that additional lines be added to the GC 2.2.4 hierarchy 
to ensure that the project-specific supplementaries override the common ones. Naturally, this would be needed for each class of documents where the conflict might occur – general conditions, specs, or drawings. Of course, a better solution is to carefully screen both the common supplementaries and the project-specific supplementaries to eliminate conflicts at the time the tendering documents are being assembled. A second situation I see frequently is as follows. Designers add specifications to the first page or two of their design drawings. From a designer's point of view, this makes sense to ensure their design assumptions and specification requirements are easily available to the design reviewer and to the superintendent. However, if this is done without considering how these specifications interrelate to MMCD or to municipal specifications, the potential for conflicts is likely. If we look at GC 2.2.4, we see that supplementary specifications rank fifth, while project drawings rank seventh. Thus, any conflict between them will be resolved contrary to the information on the drawings. Obviously, this is not what the designer, and likely the owner as well, want to happen. There are two ways to avoid this problem. One, move all specifications on the drawings into proper supplementary specifications. Or, two, define the exact pages of the drawings, including the drawing number and revision date, which contain the specifications, to be supplementary specifications and not drawings. Either solution will avoid the designer's specifications being outranked if a conflict exists. Let me summarize the points I've made in this video. One, a document hierarchy is essential to determine the ranking of documents in order to be able to resolve conflicting instructions. Two, the MMCD provides its 12-level hierarchy in GC 2.2.4, which owners can modify if necessary. Three, the document hierarchy cannot assist if the conflict occurs in two documents at the same level. Four, in our context, the legal principle of contra preferentum allows the contractor to choose which direction to follow when there are conflicts at the same level. Five, owners who issue common supplementals for every project need to take care to avoid conflicts with project-specific supplementals or put additional levels into the hierarchy. And six, putting specifications on drawings can easily lead to problems. Either move those notes into supplementary specifications or define those drawing pages as specifications. Well, I hope that's helped clarify this contract consideration. Please check our website for further assistance and to see what other topics are presented in this series. Thanks for watching.